that happen overnight? Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> everybody thinks that. Everyone is like, oh my God, like you just like all of a sudden, that's so great. And I'm like, girl, you have no idea. Hey everyone, I'm Morgan Debon, a passionate entrepreneur and life advisor. With the Journey Podcast, you'll discover that success isn't about the destination, it's about the journey. I'm sharing stories of amazing people who've taken control of their lives. Join me on my own journey to discover the secret sauce behind reaching success with permission from no one else. Welcome to the Journey Podcast. I'm so excited today. We are going to talk about all the things. It's a little (laughs) more pop culture than you all are used to. But I'm here today with Cami Crawford, and she's an incredible, extraordinary woman, great personality, someone who has worked her ass off to get to where she is today, and legitimately one of one in the space of TV, being a businesswoman, and really carving out her own unique world in the space of entertainment and media, which is so not easy. So I'm really excited to have her here today on the Journey Podcast. Thank you so much. I feel like I need to record that and play it for myself every morning whenever I'm having like any self-doubt. I need to just repeat that over and over again. So you are on someone's vision board. Just never forget it. (laughs) Okay. So for people who are unfamiliar with you, maybe just walk me through like quick background, how you wound up as host of Catfish and, you know, you're recently featured in Sports Illustrated. So, Mm -hmm. so many new things have been going right for you. What's your origin story? Well, gosh, I have to take you back to like 2010, 2009, 2010. I competed in my first ever pageant, which was Miss Maryland Teen USA. I knew nothing about pageants. I had never even really watched a pageant. I think one time a pageant was playing in a nail salon when I was getting a pedicure. And like that was like my knowledge of pageantry. I didn't really know anything about it. But one of my friends had told me like, you should do this pageant. I think you would have a fun time. You'd meet cool people. So I was like, okay, I like cool people. I like a fun time. So I signed up and I ended up going on obviously it took some training it took some time it took a lot of work and preparation to do something in a short amount of time that people had been preparing for for years and some of them their whole lives so it was a lot but I ended up winning Miss Maryland Teen USA on my first try and then going on to Miss Teen USA and winning that so that was 2010 so I moved from from Maryland from Potomac Mm -hmm. hey Real Housewives yes Everybody knows Potomac now. Before I used to have to like describe where it is. And now I I don't have to. Exactly. Not BG. MoGo. I wish I was from Pretty Girl County, but I'm from Montgomery County and I moved from Potomac to New York and lived in New York for a year, lived that life of Miss Teen USA, going to galas and volunteer events and, you know, linking up with charitable alliances and signing hundreds of autographs a day. And it was chaos. I worked with Miss USA and Miss Universe. Mm -hmm. And it was insane. And it really, I think, prepared me and propelled me into the life that I'm living now. I did have to kind of forge my own way, though. But it, it taught me a lot about being a part of a brand and being a brand and, Mm -hmm. you know, representing yourself in a certain way, in a certain light. And I'm grateful for that. So I win the pageant. I moved to New York. I give up my title. I decide to go to the University of Alabama because at the time I thought I wanted to be a dermatologist. Let's just fast forward through that story. I did not become a dermatologist, (laughs) obviously. I I gave up that dream because I just realized it wasn't for me anymore. But because of my experience in front of the camera as Miss Teen USA, I was like, maybe TV hosting could be something that I could be good at. And I ended up switching majors. So I switched from pre-med to communications and media studies. And I moved back to New York, went to Fordham University, got my bachelor's in communications and media studies with a double concentration in television and radio and digital media. And started modeling. And that's when I got into that because I was like, you know, I got to pay some of these bills for reels and headshots and all these things that, you know, I wanted to do for my TV career. I needed some money to be able to supplement that. And my parents, you know, luckily I come from an amazing, incredible family. I'm the oldest of six girls and my parents are very supportive and they would have given me whatever I needed to be able to get that dream started. But I was like, I have to do this on my own. I got to be on my grind. I got to be on my thing. And that's what I did. And so I, you know, started hosting just little things here and there, press junkets, 
red carpets. I started hosting my own lifestyle segments and beauty segments on local news in the tri-state area. And that was kind of how I got myself into it. And then I turned 25 and I had my quarter century life crisis and I thought my life was over. And <laughs> it's like, what am I doing with my life? Who am I going to be? Like, I can't just keep doing this because I wasn't getting paid. The only thing that was paying me was my modeling career. And I had some great clients. I was modeling for e-com for Macy's and Lord and & Taylor and, you know, some big, big names, big brands. But I wasn't making any money off of my TV career and I really wanted to. And I was trying to figure out a way to do it before I quit. And I finally made the decision like, you know what? I think I need to move to LA, which was something that I never wanted to do. As an East Coast girly, I was like, ew, LA is not my vibe. I'm an right. East Coast girl. I need to be in the New York streets, like where yes. the hustle and bustle is. But something was just gnawing at me to move to L.A. And I couldn't figure out what it was, but I was like, I have to follow it or I'm never going to know what this could be. The week of my move, I get an email from someone in the casting department for the production company that does Catfish. And wow. first I thought it was a scam. I was like, oh, this is a human trafficking scheme and I'm about to fall for it because I'm so I desperate. <laughs> I'm so desperate for a job and this job being like a show that I've watched I felt like my whole life at that point I you know the documentary and the show came out when I was in college and I've watched it from the beginning yeah. so I was like somebody knows my tea somebody knows that I'm obsessed with the show and is like trying to get me but fine like I have to follow it because of what else do I have and I end up following it. I literally was in the middle of packing up my house. I think this was like on a Wednesday. My mom and my sisters had come to help me pack. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I think I need to go to Iowa City and film this show Catfish because they just asked <laughs> me to co-host an episode as a guest. Wow. And my mom is like, of course they did. Of course she thinks like the sun <laughs> rises and loves. sets. She thinks the sun rises and sets out of my ass. So she's like, yes, like, of course, yeah. of course they want you to be the co-host and you're going to be the new co-host and you're going to like, I'm like, okay, slow down. I've been working for seven years up until this point in hosting wow. and nothing has happened. So yeah. like, let's not get our hopes up. But I ended up literally leaving my boxes with my mom and my sisters for them to finish packing for me because my mom was like, I got this. You go to Iowa. And I went and that was the beginning of the rest of my life, basically. That was my big break. I, you know, co-hosted one episode mm -hmm. and then they asked me to do another one and then another yeah. one. And I did six of them. And then Neve called me and asked me if I wanted to be the full-time co-host. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then you became think... iconic for real people. And then... <laughs> and then life just completely changed yeah. for me. And now I host three shows between MTV and Paramount Plus, yeah. Catfish, X on the Beach, Are You the One? And then I have a relationship advice podcast called Relationship. Mm -hmm. And I do all kinds of brand deals and influencer work. And I'm blessed. I'm really, really blessed. And I can't believe that this is my life sometimes. Incredible. That's just so incredible and so beautiful. And I think you know, in some ways you put a lot of work and effort into the opportunities at each step of the way. And then you are also always, there's always some level of luck, but like to get outreach from a, a recruiting, I mean, people don't understand how these things are sourced. Like yes. that is incredible. Yes. Well, I think people have this misconception and I think I probably did too, that like these big media executives have these lavish pages where they're just posting Rangers. all of the, you know, like all of the biggest celebrities from their network and their bios on Instagram are, I am a big CEO at MTV. And that is not the case. Like mm -hmm. the people at the top barely have an Instagram. You would think it's probably a catfish page. Yeah. The profile picture is literally of them with their dog or, or maybe yeah, just the dog. They're yeah. like lurker accounts. They don't look real, right. but they are the decision makers. And I didn't realize that not only had that person in casting been following me, but there were two executives at MTV that had been following me mm. for a long time and watching me post my content. And I'm so glad that I didn't give up because, you know, we all have that like inner saboteur yeah. inside of us that's like, why are you even posting this? This probably looks so corny to people. Right. Forget all that. Like post your work you because who was supposed to know that you're doing this work if you're not sharing it? 
I agree. I see so many people pitch me and Blavity to be like hosts on different shows or like they have these ideas. And then I go to their Instagram and I'm like, you literally have no proof yes that you can do this and then they send their website and I'm like okay cool you have a demo reel but like I need to know that you're conversational like I need to know that this is what you do yes right exactly and people get their brand wrong yeah I think it's easy to especially when you're kind of like personal life and your career life are competing against each other Mm -hmm. and like a lot of people don't have the support system that I've had And I've recognized that a lot of people are so in their heads about things because they don't have a group of people who are behind them every step of the way telling them that they can do it or that their work matters or that they have something unique and special. They have more people around them who are telling them the opposite. And that's why I always tell people like, I don't care what it is. If you want to be Miss USA, if you Mm want to be Cami Crawford on Catfish, if you want to be on any major platform where you have to be vulnerable enough to put yourself out there you cannot have haters in your midst i'm sorry yeah. there is no room for hateration in my dancery i do not accept it like <laughs> goodbye <laughs> well i think the other thing that's really interesting about what you're saying and i want to call it out for people who are trying to figure out like okay i've done everything that she's saying why not me mm. is like you also had institutions like you've been through a variety of trained programs that were designed to mm-hmm. build brands Yes. Right. Like Miss Teen USA is a process and a program and a structure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you won. So then you got put into now another category of the 1% of Mm -hmm. pageantry ladies. Yes. (laughs) Yes. The winner. Yes. You know, and then you're indoctrinated into a whole new system of training of like, this is what it is, good or bad, but Mm -hmm. like, this is the roadmap. And then to your point, you did the TV thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just had to call that out because I think sometimes people look at the results and say, why she's pretty. I'm pretty. Mm -hmm. I live in New York. I moved to L.A. Yeah. What are we talking about? What's happening? happening? I get it. I understand. I understand. I think I, you know, as a rising Virgo, I'm a Scorpio, but I'm a rising Virgo. I value structure. I need a base level to build off of, I need to have all of the information. I'm that type of person. Mm. So, you know, even after, obviously you trained for the pageant, did Mm -hmm. that, but to get into TV, I was like, I need fundamentals. Like just having experience and somebody handing me a microphone because I was Miss Teen USA and telling me, hey, like you should host this thing. That doesn't make me a host. And at the time too, no shade to where TV has gone now, but like you had to be trained. You couldn't That's just right. be like an a influencer. Journalist. You had to be like a journalist. And I didn't go to school for journalism. I went mm-hmm. to school for communications, which is a little bit different than journalism. Mm-hmm. But throughout my TV career prior to Catfish, I forced myself into education. So I found a TV host and coach, Miss Barbara Abel in Brooklyn. Oh, my love. I love her so much. She was like my TV fairy godmother. I had a pageant fairy godmother. Her name was Jules Meyer. She's like still is in the pageant scene and like teaches all the girls all the things. But Miss Barbara was my TV fairy godmother. And she showed me the ropes. She taught me prompter. Sometimes we wouldn't even work on TV work when I would have my hour long sessions with her, we would just talk about life. And like, she had to break down a lot of things for me, a lot of walls that I had built up through my pageant experience, you know, reteaching me that having a point of view, a strong point of view was a good thing and not something that I should shy away from, which obviously changed my life because everybody knows I'm very well known for my point Mm -hmm. of view. But in pageantry, you're not taught to have that. You're taught to see both sides of everything so you don't offend anyone. And then as a Black woman, it's like you really got to tread lightly because, you know, you're going to be seen as angry or aggressive or whatever. And she helped me break all of that. And then after her, I started doing improv classes and like went to like acting classes. I have to you, are y'all listening to her? Yeah. Because this is the point. No, I'm serious. This is my point. You had two sets of coaches, advisors, mentors. Mm-hmm. You had classes outside of that. Mm-hmm. And it's not like you were a millionaire. I mean, you mm-hmm. were probably yeah. making choices on how you were spending your finances to invest in yeah. yourself or your family made a choice to contribute, whatever it may be. But it wasn't like you were just hanging out in Cannes. 
mm-hmm. because you had already, you know, gotten this seal of approval. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. no. Right? I, I was active in my pursuit. Like I was not playing around because I realized that I'll say this. So I did the acting classes with Tasha Smith, who was not playing around with me. She made me cry in one of those classes. And I love her for it because I needed that. I needed that. I had so many walls up and such a fear of like being seen fully because I had been taught that you're not supposed to do that. I needed to unlearn. I needed to get back to my true self. And I did that. I also started taking a journalism class at, it was SUNY in the city. So Mm -hmm. it was like C-U-N-Y. And I put myself in that program. So I put myself into positions to learn more things because Mm -hmm. I had an experience. Actually, how I met my TV hosting coach was because I got an audition with E! News that was literally handed to me by somebody who knew me from the pageant world. And they were like, you should do this audition. You Mm. have said you wanted to be on E! News. At the time, E! News was like my dream. And she was like, you should audition for this. And I was like, okay, like, yeah, I should audition for this. Like, this is what I want. Like, why shouldn't I be the next E! News host? I think I was like 22 at the time. (laughs) But I was like, why shouldn't I be her? Like, Yeah. yeah, that's me. Child, I remember being on my way to the audition and I started bawling. I thought I was going to throw up. I was in the back of a yellow cab. I had the worst anxiety of my entire life. I called my mom. My mom gets my grandma on the phone. We're on a prayer line now. They're like pleading the blood of Jesus. And I am just sobbing because I am not prepared. I'm not prepared. I didn't have any of the tools I just had a dream. I just wanted it. Mm -hmm. But wanting it is not enough. Mm -hmm. You have to have the tools. Thankfully, I get to the audition. And who is leading the audition? Miss Barbara, who I did not know at the time. That's how I met her, was Mm -hmm. she was leading the audition. She records my audition. She turns the camera off. And she's like, sit down. (laughs) And I'm like, my heart is beating out of my chest because I'm like, E-News, like this is my dream. I'm going to be on E-News. And I sit down and she's like, I think you have something. Mm. I think you have something special. I think you're going to be the next Hoda Kotb, she would always say. She's, and I loved Hoda. So I was like, oh my God, Hoda Kotb, I'm going to be Hoda. I'm gonna be Hoda. <laughs> she was like, I think you really could make it far. And because of that, I'm not submitting this audition. Oh, and wow. I was instantly heartbroken and humbled at the same time. Because up until that point, I had kind of gotten what I wanted because I worked for it. But I hadn't really worked for this as much as I needed to. It's a new level. No, it's a new level. And so she explained to me why she wasn't submitting it. She was like, you're not ready. I think we Mm -hmm. need to definitely do some training so that you can be. And also what I didn't realize at the time was that NBC Universal had this thing. I think they called it like the sunflower system. I don't know if they still have it. But essentially, it was a database full of talent that had submitted or auditioned for different roles there. And your information stays in there the same for like a long time. So if you have a bad audition that gets submitted, it stays there. And you can't just like come back and be like, hey, I've got these new tools. Can I come audition again? I like, mean, I'm sure if they had that system back then, they definitely have that. Now. I'm sure. I'm sure they do. It's just like recruiting. Like I have people's exactly. resumes for people who applied at Blavity like 2016. And I can see, see every time they apply every year. See? So if you put on there that you're proficient in Excel and you're trilingual right. and you know all these languages, yeah, they remember that. So if you were one day looking for somebody who spoke Polish and you could hit up the one Polish speaking person and they're like, actually, <laughs> I never spoke Polish. Like, come on, now you've missed an opportunity. So that's why she didn't submit it. And immediately after that, I was like, okay, teach me everything. Like, I just want to learn everything. And that's what we did. We started with Prompter and, you know, actually, I don't think we started with Prompter. We started with other things and then worked our way up to Prompter. Because I remember Mm -hmm. being like, why can't I get on Prompter? Like, that's what I want to do. Why are we doing these, like, writing exercises? But it all mattered. It all mattered. I needed all of it. And I needed to have the tools so that going into another audition, I never felt like that again. And I I never did. I never felt like that again. Every single other time I went in for something, 
I felt prepared. And every single other time I went in for something, I got it. So I just have to say, like, you need all the tools, even the things that you don't think that you need. You need all of them because you never know when you're going to have to whip something out. It is what is going to separate you from other people. There are a lot of well-known people that we know who have been granted amazing platforms and shows that have not done well because they don't have the tools. And I remember looking at those people too and being like, why am I working so hard when I could just get a million followers and I could be given a talk show and, right. you know, that it would be that easy. But longevity is what we're mm -hmm. striving for. And knowledge is important and knowledge is power. And you have mm -hmm. to, you have to work for it. Like it feels yeah. so much better when you've worked for it, even if it takes seven years, like it took me. Yeah. And seven years, honestly, in LA, New York, it's not that long. Right. Exactly. You but started at the time, younger. you started younger. Right. And that's the thing. I think when you're young, especially, and this is for all the young people listening, I too thought that I was supposed to be Oprah at 25. Yes, I too thought, like, why don't I have three shows at 21? I just graduated from college. I should have everything. Like, yeah, I get it. I get it. We all have that mindset, and mm -hmm. that's good. But let it fuel you to just soak up everything. Soak up every experience. Like, you don't know everything. You don't right. know everything. I thought I knew everything. I didn't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know half of what I know now. Right. And it's all a part of the process. You have to trust the process and you have to lean into it because when you get to be, you know, 30 like me and you're sitting pretty in your role and things are now coming to you, you will be prepared for it. Right. I agree. The world has changed so much. I guess <laughs> I am curious, like, because there are so many women well, one, I feel like there's like three eras. There's like the YouTubers mm -hmm. and there are the YouTubers who like some of them made it, right? Mm -hmm. So like Issa was a YouTuber who made it. Right. Or Shannon Boudram. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love Shan. Right? So there's yeah. like a few people who've like made it from digital to TV. Then there's like the Instagram crowd and there's all the comedians mm -hmm. that made it, like B. Simone mm -hmm. and like Duvall, right. like the people on BT and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, so they made mm -hmm. it. Do you think the TikTokers are going to make it? You know... It's hard to say because I could have easily said, you know, back in the day that like reality show stars and like actors don't make good hosts. But then you have Drew Barrymore who's killing it. And like, I think yeah. that it really depends what, right. Well, yeah. I was, was killing it. <laughs> was killing it. Was killing <laughs> it before that whole thing happened. But like, yeah. I think if you are able to hone in on your thing mm -hmm. you can make it anywhere you just have to be so passionate about that thing Issa was super passionate about you know what she was talking about and it led her to insecure it led her to being a major producer and having a major production company and you know having the sweet life which I got to host the reunion of and Shan you know sex is her topic like she owns it yeah you have to have a point of view and mm -hmm. you know I remember my TV host and coach telling me too, like to stop being so afraid of being pigeonholed. I had this mm -hmm. really intense fear of being boxed in mm -hmm. and only being known for one thing. And she mm. taught me the importance of how valuable it is to be known for one thing. And once you are known yeah. for that thing, doors will open up for you and you'll be considered for things that you may not have thought about because other people are thinking about it, about you in that way. And so I think, you know, even for like Instagram people and you just don't, you don't know who's watching. So just keep mm -hmm. putting out your content. I hope that TikTok people and TikTok stars can utilize the same, you know, framework, uh, basically. framework. like, you know, you have mm -hmm. Monet McMichael, who I mm -hmm. love. She's incredible. And she's like, I know I was like, you are beauty space. Surviving in fashion week, sis. Love seeing everything she posts. I'm like living by Paris. I'm like okay. reliving my 24 year old life. I'm like, yes, you better be in Paris. You better be walking it's in L'Oreal. Love it. I love it. And I'm like, that is someone who owns her brand. She's not trying to do a bunch of other things. Like, mm -hmm. you know, she's sticking to her thing. And why couldn't she host a beauty series or a beauty yeah. show? Like, you know, if you want to be considered for certain things, you need to become really good at something. So I think it's possible. 
if you're not, you know, messing around and trying to just do a bunch of dance, like, unless you're trying to host a dance show, it's like, let's, <laughs> exactly, let's, like, let's figure it out. Like, let's really dive in and figure out what it is that you want to do and become really good at that. Mm-hmm. And also pick a niche that pays. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, you might be really good at DIY, but do DIY shows pay? Right. Right. So, and there's so far and few in between. Like a lane. Yeah, there's so far and few in between. Like food is a good one. Finance is a good one. Beauty is a good one. And honestly, like I love people who are really passionate about super niche things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mushrooms, if you want to foresty, yeah. environmental, yes. literally any of that stuff. Is I love there's this one girl that I follow that is obsessed with buying miniature things like little mini things and she has like a little miniature grocery store and like I love that (laughs) do I see it being like some big you know tv brand maybe not necessarily but do I see her maybe having her own line of miniature things at like target sure like I think like something on TLC where it's like my life as a miniature obsessed person here exactly. For it. Watch exactly. That. <laughs> exactly. I would watch it because I'm that person. Like those things are very attractive to me. <laughs> so I think, you know, post your stuff, like post your content and be real about what it is that you're doing yeah. because people can sense when you're not. I agree. Okay. Let's get into some relationship things since that is your expertise. Most recently I have been deep and in, dragged into these holes of like baby mama drama. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're also just at that age where yes. like secret baby mamas are being exposed and people are finding out that they're the baby mama when they thought they were the main and it's yeah. just all types of stuff. The most recent one that I've just been obsessed with that I know I really shouldn't, so don't judge me y'all, is the girl in Atlanta named Morgan who has, yes. well, she's not in Atlanta, but she's baby mama number seven from a man the random, The random man in Atlanta. And she has merch and I love it. And oh my God, her baby is so cute with those bonnets. I literally can't. I literally can't. I love it. I love it. I love it for her. I hope she flips it. I think I saw her do a brand deal for a morning after pill. Oh, yes. Yes. Because she's like, let this be your daily birth control. I love, I love her. I love her. I think she's so funny. I think she could really be something big. I just wonder what she wants to do. If she wants to do it. Because not everybody who makes a TikTok or makes a viral video wants right. to be, you know, seen regularly on TV. Yeah, I don't know. But she got that baby on there every day. So I'm like, yeah, you already exposed this. <laughs> you already true. get your baby on blast. So That's true. That's it's true. just go all the way. That's true. You Versus- know what I couldn't believe? The fact that the random man from Atlanta actually spoke out. Why would you? You should have oh, been hiding terrible. under a rock. Are you crazy? He I would have never. I would have never put my face on the internet for everybody. No, not only that, he tried to chase clout. Like he tried to like show their DMs and texts. And I'm like, sorry, there is no redeeming qualities about you. No, There's nothing no. you can say. No. And he was dusty. So very <laughs> dusty. Baby mama's got on TikTok. And I was like, oh my God, this is my version of reality TV. Yes. Yes. Like, I don't too. need reality me TV. Too. I need life. It's real so good. TikTok algorithms but yes. then we talk into people's drama yes agreed so good <laughs> okay so like rapid fire what are some of your red flags that people need to be thinking of I mean you've got a new season of catfish coming out mm-hmm. and you've seen so much yes too much so much. <laughs> <laughs> too much oh well I mean well I guess you could say if he's from Atlanta <laughs> my immediate, immediate red flag <laughs> immediate red flag no I think not just like with dating online but like there are a lot of red flags in real life relationships that we miss every day mm. I've done it like we've all done it and that's why I always say the red flags start looking like six flags every once in a while because you're <laughs> like me this is so much fun it's not so stay away steer clear rapid fire for me it is anyone who is rude to service people or waiting staff immediate no immediate Mm -hmm. no anyone who i mean there's so many that come to mind i'm like like, everything is a red flag one of mine was two phones i was like that's a flag two two phones phones." two phones was a flag for me you don't need two phones right Um, unless well i don't i don't even think there is an unless no and not unless you have a corporate phone and you're a corporate right 
Right. But at least we're not corporate men. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, what you got two phones for? Exactly. Exactly. Anyone who talks really negatively or badly about their ex all the time, mm. or like even if they do have a baby mama, anyone who's like dragging their baby mama, anyone who's like, oh, they were crazy. They were so crazy. Okay. So why were they crazy? And what mm. did you do to contribute to make them crazy? Mm. Red flag to me, because I just feel like you shouldn't be doing that. We've all had exes that went really badly, but like if you're constantly talking shit about your ex, maybe there's some unresolved things there, or maybe you were actually, because I wonder if I talked to her, what she would say. <laughs> well, I'm crazy because. Right, exactly, exactly. So one, two, you know, three, four, five, six, seven. A lot of people lack introspection, so that is a problem. Let's see, what else? Any man, for me personally, any man who is like homophobic and like loves to say homophobic stuff, it's I'm like, not. I'm not into it. I'm not into it at all. I think it's mm -mm. really, really, and can't understand if you call them out if they're like defensive. If it's like, yeah. oh, I didn't know, like this person was trans, and I called them a he or a she. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, cool. But if you're defensive, yeah, yeah, let's talk about it. Because like, what's really going on? Why are you so passionate about this topic that allegedly does not concern you? I just feel like I don't want to date anyone or speak to anyone who has hatred towards anybody. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Probably. Unless I hate them and it's a mutual hatred, I don't want to hear about it. That a man or a person who is not generous, red mm. flag, because I tell, I, tell, I tell my friends all the time, like, you could date a billionaire and he could never want to spend a dime on you. He could never want to, you know, pick you up from the airport or like do mm. generous things. It's not even just monetary things. It's just like life things. Like he could yes. not want to fill up your Stanley cup. Like those things, this like generosity. Yeah. Um, so people who are not generous, because I'm very generous and I'm mm. very loving and, you know, acts of service is my love language. So I yeah, people who tip bad hurt me. Yes. And people who don't I'm like, it. really? Are you giving, really giving this person a 10% tip? Like, yes. Yeah. Like, why yeah i'm always baseline 18 always yeah for i'm me, like even if they're bad i'm like it doesn't is, mm -hmm. is it really that serious yeah <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so those are just a few of mine i think i made a list like a 40 point list one time on my phone of like it i feel like you should share that with the rest of us <laughs> I'm not single, man. I'm just like here in solidarity for the single girls. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> there's there's so many icks. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Men, I can't tell you how many men I've come across on TikTok or in person who think everything is emasculating. Lotioning mm. their ass is emasculating or they say it is gay. I'm like, what? Like, so you're absolutely insane and you have an ashy ass. So no, they don't like wash between their butt cheeks <laughs> like i've seen way too much i've seen way too many people on tiktok talking about how they had to teach their boyfriend that they have to actually like not just let the water trickle down and i'm just I, like what kind of I've world are we never living heard in this, but now i will go into the inners of tiktok and find it <laughs> that's crazy yes. it's gonna pop up on your algorithm now definitely yes <laughs> Red flag. Red, red flag. flag. Red flag. You don't know how to use soap. Actively use soap. Red flag. That's right. That's right. And any like things that you've seen on catfish, like what's been like the most memorable catfish episode that you are like, that was iconic. Oh God. I mean, we've, had lot, so, so. we've had so many. I think the one that kind of like put me on the map and solidified me in like our viewers' minds was the Red and Jaleesa episode, which is the one with my good girl, a friend from around the way, Ashley Taylor. She cussed me out. She called me the help. She uh, called me a bitch. And I stood up to her. Mm -hmm. And people really loved that. And that was my first ever episode as the permanent co-host of the show. Mm -hmm. But people loved the fact that I wasn't afraid to speak my mind and call her out and then also stand up for myself when she came at me. And so I actually appreciate her a lot. People think that we have this like beef or that she just hates me, but I just always express my love for her because if it wasn't for her, I don't think that I would have had that as quickly, like that right. kind of um, being received by catfish fans like that. So 
I'm very grateful for you, Ashley yeah. Taylor, on record, girl. Honestly, sometimes controversy allows you to have a moment of clarity. Yeah. Yeah, you exactly. Know. Exactly. And it's like, you know, a time to prove yourself. I loved the episode in general because people just love it. I said some silly things to her and got her riled up and, you know, yeah. I now enjoyed I have to it. Go watch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Most viral moments. All right, Cammie. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully the girls enjoyed this. And also my biggest takeaway that I hope that people also really, really think about is like, if you want to be a host, if you want to be talent, you know, there is actually an inner workings to these things. And there is a professionalism and a process to it. It's not just enough to be good looking and have a social following. There is actually a system, a process, and typically many, many years. You guys heard Yvonne Orji. She just came on the podcast. She talked about the same thing, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I talked about for my own brand, people are like, oh, you get so many brand deals. I'm like, this did not happen overnight. Yeah. What are you talking about? (laughs) Everybody thinks that. Everyone is like, oh my God, like you just like all of a sudden, that's so great. And I'm like, girl, you have no idea the bottles upon bottles of wine that I had to get through to get to this moment. Because I was sad. I was ready to give up. And yeah, people don't see that part. But there's so much more that happens behind the scenes and on the way. And all of it is valuable. All of it is important. Absolutely. So thank you for sharing your journey with us. Of course. Thank you. All right. Bye, y'all. I'll catch you on the next episode of Journey Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Journey Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a review and head to our Instagram and YouTube to leave a comment. And look forward to hearing how this podcast has made an impact on your own journey.